What will your future look like? The job you do today could be different than the jobs of tomorrow. Some see this as a challenge. At UCF, we see opportunity. A chance for you to grow your knowledge and strengthen your skills from anywhere life might take you. With in-demand degree programs and resources for your success, UCF Online can help you prepare for the future and all the possibilities that come with it. From the University of Central Florida's Center for Distributed Learning, I'm Tom Cavanaugh. And I am Kelvin Thompson. And you are listening to TopCast, the teaching online podcast. Mm -hmm. Hi, Kelvin. <laughs> Wait what? a minute. What was that? <laughs> I heard another mystery woo. I thought you vetoed all of those, Tom. <laughs> I thought I did, too. <laughs> <laughs> mystery wooer, please come and identify yourself. How'd you get on here? It's a Zoom bomber. <laughs> Hi, I'm Amy Crowley Gonsolin, and I'm from MDC Online at Miami Dade College. And I am a proud TopCast insider and was glad to hear about the Mystery Woo opportunity that may or may not be continuing. Um, I've been listening to TopCast for the last about three years, um, awesome. and I look forward to each episode where I get to find out how coffee is going to be connected to the topic at hand. Um, I appreciate y'all's insightful um, discussions that are also entertaining, and I especially love the addition of video recently. Hmm. There's an upvote for video, Tom. Yeah, well, welcome, Amy, a fellow Floridian. So yeah. we're, we're glad to have you on the show. No, Thank that, you for the yeah, opportunity. That was, awesome. that, was, that, was, that was great. I think, there, and also, Tom, an upvote for the mystery woo. Oh, an upvote <laughs> for the mystery woo, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's not as weird as I thought it was. <laughs> it might be weird, but just because things are... Tom, I have, I have lived a lifetime on the premise that just because it's weird doesn't mean it's not something you want to keep around. <laughs> yeah, no comment, Kelvin. <laughs> well, cool. Um, well, welcome, Amy, and uh, thanks for the woo. Um, yeah, thank you. So, Kelvin, uh, as we were getting started, yeah. uh, I did see you taking a, a bit of a sip mm -hmm. from a, a mug and vessel of some sort. A mug and an earthenware yeah. vessel of, of dark, um, rich... Um, Hot beverage. Yes. So you're probably wondering what this is because I poured you some safely. Yes, and I'm, I'm drinking it out of the mug that Dr. Beth Nettles, our colleague, gave me at like Christmas that time called I, it's, I'm Silently Correcting Your Grammar. What's really funny about that is it's true. It is true. I can't help it as a, somebody who teaches writing and technical writing and technical editing. And, and Beth actually took one of my classes here. So she, she's she knows been the recipient true. of it. Yes. She knows it's true. So, but thank you, Beth, and thank you for the mug. Yeah, and I'm, I'm back in my, uh, hello, I'm Johnny Cash. Johnny Cash. Uh, the yeah. Cash Museum mug. A boy named Kelvin. That's right. Something yeah. like that. Beats the heck out of Sue. Uh, well, inside these two mugs, uh, you'll probably wonder uh, what's in there. I am wondering. Yes. Well, let me let me let me let me let me let me reveal something to you then. Today's coffee comes to us from Topcast listener, past guest, and another Florida colleague, Dr. Deb Miller of the University of North Florida. I she know wanted her. to sh Yes, I do too. We love Deb. She's been uh, a guest twice um, on Topcast. Uh, she wanted to share a coffee with us that has a personal connection because it was roasted, she said, in her hometown. So specifically, this coffee is a blend. It's got a long name. It's a blend called Alabama Rivers Alliance River Roast. I guess we could call it River Roast for short. And it was created by higher ground coffee roasters from Vestavia Hills, Alabama, which I, I looked it up. It's kind of near Birmingham, in order to benefit efforts to protect and restore the rivers in the state of Alabama. That's why it's River River Roast. And that, so what do you think of the coffee? And can you somewhere in the murky depths of the coffee find a connection to today's episode? I uh, I do like the coffee. Uh, as I've said before, I think you, you brew a, a, a hearty cup of coffee, uh, it, but it's good. And thank you, Deb. Uh, I enjoy it. Uh, as far as the connection goes, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. um, th so the one thing I can think of is that it came from Deb, who was uh -huh. on the podcast more than once, uh -huh, uh -huh. and uh, we happen to have an interview today with somebody who is, as after today, will have been on the podcast more than once. 
Oh, that's true. That's that's true. I would I would just say, why, you know, you're a film major. Widen widen the shot a little bit, and uh, I would say that that uh, the particular uh, coffee that Deb sent us is all about um, drumming up contributions from the community to bring about a benefit. So, and then Deb contributed it to us for. Uh, benefit of our listeners. So there's a, a bit of a contribution and benefit from kind of a large, like-minded group of people. I thought maybe somehow there might be some ghost of a connection to today's topic. I get it now. I understand it now. Yes. Because uh, the person we're talking to is sort of responsible for Supporting a community and providing benefit. Uh, yeah, I get it. Yeah, yeah, well, not one of my best, but there's something. You know? <laughs> I actually like my connection better. Yeah, well, yours is good, too. For the record. Sure. So, you know. so people may be wondering, who is this mystery person who has been on before and is about to be on again? And why, yes. pray tell, would he, she, or they be on this more, more than once? That's right. Well, I'll tell you why. Please do. Uh, Kelvin, yes? you recently interviewed Dr. Jessica Knott. Mm -hmm. friend of the show, yep. from the Online Learning Consortium to discuss some new community engagement emphases at the Online Learning Consortium, which is, yeah. well, you know, right up there among my favorite consortia. Yeah. If you've got, you and I are both fellows of this particular consortium. That's, that's true. I'm, um, I'm deeply honored. I mean, I, I think that, I don't know if there's, if there are any, we have a lot of really good associations in our field. I don't know if there is a a similar distinction across all the other um, organizations or not, but that is that is one that I'm uh, I, I was I was humbled to be in good company, yourself included, because uh, there's some good folks um, who are OLC fellows. Um, shall I get, break down uh, Jess's bio for everyone? Please do. Uh, Dr. Jessica Knott is currently Assistant Vice President of Community Strategy, Experience, and Management at the Online Learning Consortium. It's like three nouns and a bunch of commas in there. As you'll hear, this is still a fairly recent change because formerly Dr. Knott was at Michigan State University where she held a number of positions but was most recently interim senior manager of instructional technology and development prior to joining the OLC team. So, Kelvin, is there anything you want to comment on before we get in the old podcast time machine and listen to your interview? No, no. Jump in the TARDIS. Let's, uh, let's time travel, and uh, we'll maybe comment a couple things uh, on the backside. All right. So here's your interview with uh, Dr. Jessica Knott. Hi, Jessica. Good to see you. So glad you could join us on TopCast today. Hi. Thank you for having me. I'm very excited to be here. Yeah. Be back, as it were. Back. Right? Yeah. This is my second time, I think. Yeah, I think so. I think uh, you were here previously with Angela Gunder a couple years back. And, and interestingly, I think we talked about this recently, that at the time you were each at individual higher ed institutions, and now you're both on the staff of the Online Learning Consortium. So congratulations again for what's still kind of a newish role for you, right? Oh, it's a very new role. Uh, I left Michigan State University at the end of November 2020. So I've only been in this role since, um, gosh, I think like November 23rd. So uh, yeah. it's it's brand new. Still has that uh, new new job smell. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I guess so. It feels, you know, I've, I've been so involved with the organization that it feels like home already. Um, it's good. just, you know, a different focus from a research one institution to uh, a nonprofit focus. Yeah. So speaking of focus, um, maybe a good place to start would be if you wouldn't mind just kind of telling us a bit about the focus of your role uh, within OLC. I would love to. So my role is a new one at the organization. My title is um, Assistant Vice President for Community Strategy, Experience and Management. So if you boil it way, way, way down, I run marketing and information technology. But the reason OLC put a senior academic technologist and learning designer in a role like that was so that they could focus and we could focus together on the community experience at OLC, uh, make sure that we're really asking the right questions of our membership, making sure that our membership remains valuable, that the resources and um, collaborations and events that we're putting on are, are 
what people need to get through not only this time, you know, we're still in a pandemic, uh, but also set people up for future success and um, helping people make sure that they know, you know, we are partners, we're here to help and we're here to celebrate all of the successes of the OLC community. So uh, marketing, IT, celebration, party kid, whatever, you know, um, a, a little bit of all of it. No, I think that's in, I think that's interesting, right? Um, I think the way you you articulated that of kind of like you got the the big fancy long um, title with a bunch of commas in it, right? Versus, well, it's kind of a marketing and IT function, but not filled by a marketing person per se, because you could you could conceptualize the role quite differently depending on the kind of person who is in it. No offense to our marketing colleagues, right? Oh right? no. Not at all. Uh, I'm I'm a storyteller. I know right. how to talk across different uh, pillars and verticals. I can talk to. I've been a server administrator. I've worked in academic technology. I cannot graphic design my way out of a paper sack. So thankfully, I have a digital marketing manager that works with me, Danielle. She's very talented. Um, so it's just a matter of putting all of the skills together so that the things that come out of OLC are speaking to the community at large. Um, authentically. Would, yes, authentically, imagine. yes. Yeah, right. And so that's where the experience comes from. It's, mm -hmm. no, that, it's that makes sense to me. And, and from what I know of you, that does seem to kind of align with some interests that I know you've been passionate about and you know, interested in, in in years past when our paths have crossed. And I can, I can, I can kind of reverse engineer my way back to you know, how, you, how you got here. That, that's cool. Now, speaking of here, uh, I seem to recall reading a blog posting as the year 2021 was beginning that was hinting at sort of new emphases for engaging with our broad community of online education professionals. So what can you tell us about that? Absolutely. So uh, it's not just me in this role. It's it's working what? across the organization, right? So the reason we the reason I wrote this post to be community experience roadmap is to kind of help people see what we have going on internally at the organization and how we're focusing outward, how we're focused inward in order to be able to be focused outward. So, um, you know, people's eyes would start to glaze over if we started talking about the uh, technology processes we were putting in place and the different ways we're refining our uh, product suite, like the scorecard and functionality and things like that. But when you put it in a, a context of experience, those are very important things. These are, are critical tools to the people who are navigating very difficult things like is my online program effective, <laughs> right? And so we're trying to not only give them the knowledge and rubrics, but also the experience and development and, and the things they need to build around that. So um, in order to do that, we're taking on a lot of strategic work internally that is externally focused. So things like figuring out, okay, what is OLC to you? Having a lot of conversations. Mm -hmm over and over community it's about the community it is about the tools and the resources and the deep expertise that comes from this community and from this long-standing nonprofit. but it's about the community i come to those events and even if i roll in like half dead and <laughs> I just want to go to sleep i come out energized because mm -hmm. that's where the people who are dealing with what i'm dealing with and the challenges and opportunities that i have are and i have that opportunity to connect with them. So um, we have the director of online engagement, Maddie Shelgren. Many of you have met her probably if you're listening to this or heard from her or heard of her and some of you may ha not have, but that ties into another thing. So we've got services at OLC, we've got events at OLC and she's helping us figure out whether we're synchronous or asynchronous, how do we connect across space and time and events and tie all of that together? So that, you know, it used to be, and I don't know if, if any of you have experienced this, but you go to OLC Innovate or OLC Accelerate and you see all your friends and you, you know, chat about just the field and your work with just all these brilliant people and you're at the dolphin pool and whatever. And then you go home and it's kind of like you've gone home from camp 
and you want to keep tweeting. <laughs> you want to yeah. <laughs> you want to write letters. You want to know what kind of coffee Calvin's drinking because you didn't get to have coffee with him that morning, right? So Maddie is helping us envision how to build those experiences across the different events and working with marketing closely to say, like, how do we surface those things? Um, mm -hmm. So how can we make the experiences we have that we've learned so much from COVID-19 and we've learned so much about what makes a meaningful virtual experience um, and how can we extend that into a world where there is a vaccine, where we will be able to sit poolside together again someday um, while including others who may be joining us virtually. How do we make those things meaningful? So one of the pictures that came to my mind um, as you were describing um, this new, I don't know if we call that a new direction or not, but these new emphases is maybe our experience quite often is, um, it's not unlike the, the data charts we get with this podcast, right? Whenever a new episode launches, there's a spike, right? And then uh, over in between, you know, between that point and the next uh, launches, you know, the little ups and downs, you know, the little the little line graph or, or bar chart uh, has some ebbs and flows, but nothing is anything like that spike on like the day of the of the launch. And I imagine it's sort of like that with the within the OLC community that uh, the community sort of anchored down a couple of points in the year with these major uh, pre COVID uh, mainly face to face events. Like, oh, that's my experience of the community. And then there's some like little ebbs and flows in between big conferences. And it sounds like part of what you and Maddie and others are looking to do is to kind of maybe even that out a little bit so that there's a little bit more happening in between spikes. Yes, this is an organization wide. We're trying to figure out how to flatten those spikes. How do we maintain, um, you know, consistent and, um, sustained engagement over time so that you know so if you're looking again at this podcast you'll probably know when i'm talking about the monomyth work that angela and i have done and continue to do because we mention our topcast episode pretty much every time we talk about the monomyth stuff we've worked on now so you'll kind. see a little spike right, yeah, right um right. so if you are to read the blog post that we're referring to, you'll see different things that we're focusing on, things like data. Not to ask you like invasive data, not to say, hey, what are you looking at? But to say, what matters to you? We're looking at these trends. What is resonating with you? And we're asking you and we're conversing with you. So how do we keep people going past that initial excitement? because once that wears off, we're all still tired. Um, I saw a little animated video this week of just this little crocheted person just kind of falling face first into a bunch of things being tired. And that's how we are. So how can we leverage this community and all of the opportunities that we have, all of the resources, all of the connections, the events, the salons, the you know social media, how can we continue to connect in meaningful ways across those many opportunities with our, our very, vibrant and um, connected organization. So um, we're sharing more user research and you know this is what matters to our our client base, our customer base, our, our member base, however you want to refer to it. This is what matters to our community. This is what matters to our industry partners. Here's where they meet. Here's where they diverge. Um, we're doing more research reports. We will be putting a heavier focus on the research initiatives that we do have coming out of OLC, focusing on those more and saying, hey, here's this report. How can we all engage with it differently and more meaningfully? What if we, you know, I don't know, reading club and things like that. So, um, you know, when you refer to, and, or, you know, Maddie and Jess doing this, it's, it's really across the organization because that touches every piece yeah. of what we do from content to, blog posts to social media to even the conversations we have with partners or just even mm -hmm. on things like Twitter or here. Mm -hmm. Well, speaking of concrete aspects of this work, I know we spoke not too long ago um, and you mentioned that OLC hopes to reinvigorate the 
OLC Podcasts. Now, some of our listeners might not know that there have been a few podcasts that OLC has partnered with um, through the years and featured on the OLC website. And, you know, in full disclosure, TopCast has been one of those podcasts over the past six years or so. And so I'm just going to ask, what can you tell us about this renewed emphasis on podcasting within OLC? Absolutely. So we, we have um, a podcast network um, that's kind of people who agreed to be, you know, featured or, hey, do you want to partner with your podcast? Um, what's your topic? What are you talking about? That is another way we can sustain engagement over time, right? That's one thing. Podcasts, people love to throw on their podcast and hop on the treadmill or do their commute or just unwind at the end of the day. Um, we've been experimenting with language in our newsletters and things like that. Like, what, you know, when we say, hey, I hope you get a chance to drink a cup of cocoa and listen to a podcast, people kind of listen to that and say, yeah, you know, maybe I can do that. Maybe that's just 20 minutes out of my day I can kind of spend with that. So um, I am working with uh, the organization to figure out like um, what kinds of opportunities exist. How can we amplify those podcasts and make being a part of that network uh, you know, a benefit for the podcaster as well as for the community. Um, what kinds of things can we do to engage people in conversation around those podcasts and what avenues do we have? What channels do we have to, um, you know, kind of keep that conversation going? Uh, there are the old standbys, Twitter. Um, some people are on Facebook. There's, you know, wh where do we, where do we do this, right? It used to be like, five years ago, we'd be like, oh, we'll have a Facebook group. Well, things have changed. So what does that look like? Um, and so we're, I'm currently looking, doing kind of a landscape analysis at, of what works and, and what kinds of, I guess, draw there is to something like a podcast network so that we can build a purposeful foundation and then start saying, okay, hey, you're somebody whose podcast is listened to a lot or cited, almost like a social network analysis. So we know that Tobcast is very well respected in the field and, and frequently listened to by people in online learning, whether they're teachers or administrators. This isn't me saying, hey, Calvin, you know, but this is me saying like, this is a thing we know. So how can we find others that are doing you know similar things we don't want to replicate there are some that right, i right, sure. that i think um that i listen to frequently so bonnie stokowiak mm -hmm. and her um teaching in, higher ed. teaching in higher ed um getting air terry green's getting air mm -hmm. um i listen to that one a lot um and i'm not a podcast person <laughs> i have pretty <laughs> severe pretty severe add so the the, the thing what you know when i started my own podcast i was like well this is kind of funny right like i'm starting this podcast and and i don't really know what i'm doing um so yeah I, it's going to be a re not i don't want to say a reinvention but a re um investment in intentionality and how we can build this podcast network to be something meaningful and interesting and also uh you know kind of a, a community draw if that makes sense so a draw for the podcasts themselves and for the members also so they are like hey i want something to listen to and they can go find it no that's great i look forward to seeing how that plays out and of course you know, if there's any way that, you know, Tom and I can, can help with that, you know, we're, we're happy to. I know there's a lot of other podcasters who would, uh, who'd love to engage, I'm, I'm sure. And would-be podcasters who haven't podcasted yet, who, who, who might, who knows, right? Yeah, um, and that's, that's just one thing with experience, right? So uh, just to, to kind of be transparent in processes, what you're bringing up is very important. So working in a silo to say, okay, we're going to make a podcast network you know, we, we need to involve podcasters. And in order to do that, you know, this landscape analysis I'm making will need to be shared. So here's yeah, the things, right. so that's kind of a benefit also. Like here are the things that seem to be working across the field and here are some really successful networks. And what do you think? And how can we build this together? So that's step two, once I get through um, the initial kind of landscape collection, <laughs> but yeah, that's, um, that's nearing, nearing completion. 
Well, speaking of nearing completion, as we uh, wrap up our conversation here, it, it occurs to me if our if our listeners maybe haven't been very engaged with OLC, either either the, the engagement means they've just come to a conference and then leave again, get the blahs, whatever, or maybe they haven't really been OLC kind of people. Uh, you know, maybe maybe their their touch point in the online ed field has come through other organizations or no organizations, right? Uh, if they haven't been very engaged, how would you recommend our listeners get started? I love that question. I really, really do. Um, and that's the thing. The thing that's so unique about OLC and why I'm so excited to be here is that when you look across the landscape of digital higher education, OLC has something for everyone, whether you're an academic technologist or an online administrator or someone who's teaching a blended course and is just like, what do I do? Um, I would encourage you to check out one of our events first. And that is because um, you will get the, I don't know if anyone's read the, the book, Chip and Dan Heath, The Power of Moments, but that's the moment that's going to make you feel the power of being an OLC member. You're going to meet the community. You're going to see just what incredible minds and hearts are the people who comprise the OLC um, network, right? So when we talk about networking, it's more than sipping coffee and, and saying, hey, so here's my card, right? It's about what we can offer each other as humans. And so, um, they would say we have OLC Innovate coming up in March that is fully virtual. Um, the registration is open for that. We are offering a number of events called Ideate. Those are salons. They're a little more conversational, like we, we gather around a, um, a topic. So if you'd like to see what an Ideate event is like, you can come to the onlinelearningconsortium.org website. And the ID8 event we did in December on diversity, equity, and inclusion in partnership with Every Learner Everywhere Network um, is available fully, um, fully open. You can access it. You don't have to be an OLC member to do it. You can get kind of a, a sense for what those events are. And then, you know, there are the, the basics. We have the OLC Today newsletter, which is very well read. Um, it'll offer you but we have institute offerings, news and events, updates, webinars, that kind of thing. It only comes to you once a week, so we're not gonna fill your inbox with stuff that you don't want, but we are very purposeful with what we put in that newsletter to make sure that it is meeting your needs. So OLC Today can be just a, a good way to see kind of what's happening service-wise and what we have to offer. Um, and if you're into research and reports, come to the OLC website, onlinelearningconsortium.org. Check out the read tab. That's where I live. Oh, I love the read tab, all the research reports and the online learning journal and that kind of stuff. So a little bit of something for everyone. I just wanted to speak across the different interests. The, yeah, those are very good recommendations. We'll try to catch all of those and uh, put links in the, the show notes, including to the blog posting that we referred to earlier. And, and uh, you know, people can go and peruse and have a jumping off point into the community, into the deep end of the pool. Like your little rubber ducky, you know, you got your duck in the, the, the nose plugs and then that white paint that you never know what it does, but it goes on your nose when you go to the pool. I, I guess. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. We I, in Florida, we make fun of people who do I don't I, that We try not to. We I'm try from to Michigan. Better. So, I know, you know. I, know, I know, I know, but you know, it was so great to, to have you here with us again, Jessica, you'll have to come back uh, downstream a little bit and tell us a little bit of an update, how this is all playing out. But uh I uh, can't wait to see the the added pizzazz, you know, in the in the community through your efforts and those of others. So, so thanks for being here. Absolutely, and it's a team effort. So, come on, community, let's do it. It'll be awesome. So, Kelvin, that was your interview with Dr. Jessica Knott. I enjoyed it, that. It was indeed. I, I yeah, I thought she had good stuff to say. I'm really glad to hear uh, what they're doing. Yeah, she's a, she's a high energy person <laughs> with a yeah. lot of great ideas, and uh, I, I think it's a good it's a good fit 
uh, in in OLC yeah. with her and, and with Angela Gunder now yeah, and yeah. Uh, all of them kind of working together. Yeah, and they're they're the real deal. And you know, I think we mentioned the um, uh, the combo interview that we did with them. Uh, I think it was back in like episode thirty eight. We'll put a link to that in the show notes in case people missed that about empathy and storytelling in online ed. Yeah, I mean, I think generally though, uh, there's a great outworking of the importance of, and we joked about kind of contribution and benefit at the beginning of the episode um, with us talking, but there's a great example of, of really trying to foster, you know, that, that two-way benefit uh, uh, of a sub part of our greater online education or digital learning community within, within OLC. We have, obviously, there's a lot of pockets of associations and organizations and so forth. Yeah, and I actually found it really interesting. She talked about creating a, a podcast network mm-hmm. of sorts. And, mm-hmm. uh, you know, from my perspective, rising tide lifts all boats. And I'm happy mm-hmm. to have the, the top cast skiff yeah. on, that, on that tide if we can. Yeah, me too. I, I, I agree. Um, I mentioned that too where, you know, we've, we've had uh, us and uh, Research in Action and the Ed Surge on Air podcast have been featured on the OLC website over the past years for us it's been about six and I think Ed Surge on Air came uh, a couple years later maybe um, but you know doing something more than that and and ginning up some new podcasters I'd love that that'd be great yeah absolutely so one area that uh, I think that was a bit of a, th- a theme was just uh, you know Jessica's call to get involved yeah you know, mm-hmm. you even asked her that question at the end, mm-hmm. like, "What's thing? What's one thing somebody can do?" And and that was kind of her her advice is like how mm-hmm. to get involved with yep. with an organization. And and while Jessica works for OLC, mm-hmm. um, it, it, that would apply to any of the organizations that yep. we're active in, uh, maybe even some that we're not active in that we could right. be active in. That's right? right. But find the one that speaks to you. That's right. you know, each of them have a kind of a different little emphasis. Like for example, yep. WCET is very strong in policy. If you have a mm-hmm. particular mm-hmm interest or emphasis in that, but not exclusively, right? I mean, there's a lot mm-hmm. of other community things. Edu- EduCause is uh, much more emphasizes the technology, right. I would say. Right. Uh, UPSIA, uh, maybe, would you say more of the continuing uh, and extended education dimension yeah, of our family? Yeah, and then, like, for example, I just this week got out of participating in their SOLAR conference, oh, yeah, and, that. and that has a particular emphasis in kind of the administration and leadership mm-hmm. side mm-hmm. of mm-hmm. things. Yeah, good. And there's others, right? And But it, it beats the heck out of just staying in your own little institutional bubble, just dealing with your own problems. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> it's like yeah. going to a 12-step group or something. You know, and, and you, you know, it sounds... About other people's problems. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds crazy, but, uh, you know, I, I'm sure you hear this, but I hear this from others uh, about our podcast, that yeah. if, if you're a one-person operation in yep. a small community college, maybe in a rural area or something, and, yep. and your job is to help foster online learning, the the podcast becomes something of a community, and you realize yeah. maybe you're not alone. That there are That's a lot right. of people dealing with the same issues you're dealing with, yep. and if we can be some small contributor to that, that that's, that's right. why we're here. But don't stop there. No, definitely don't stop there. But don't stop listening either. No, 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 don't no. no, don't don't do that. Don't do that. So any any final comments on on your conversation with with Jessica before we before we get to the bottom of our coffee cups here? No, I think we'll uh, we'll be interested to see how that plays out with them, and um, you know, hey, maybe we'll have her back or you know some other folks from other associations back and talk about this this engagement theme. I think we should check in on the engagement theme one way or the other, for sure. Yeah. So you want to kind of wrap it up with sure. a, with a kind of a final uh, takeaway? Yes. So communities rely on the connections, interactions, and contributions of individuals in order to thrive. We're all about thriving, not merely surviving. And the community engagement work of professional associations enriches the broader community of online and digital learning professionals. So would you agree with that? I would agree with that. I would also like to thank Deb for the coffee and Amy yep. for the woo. Woo! <laughs> thank you so much. <laughs> woo you back. Yeah, thank you for, for joining us. Um, so thank everybody else for listening. And uh, until next time, For TopCast, I'm Tom. I'm Kelvin. See ya. 